Oh boy, what's going on? First of all, shout out to all of my nerdy intellectual folks for leaving these well constructed comments. I appreciate you, really appreciate you. Today, it's kind of heavy. Today is going to be a sobering video. We're going to talk about how the United States of America has entered the economic danger zone. And I had to do a little research on this. And this video is about the national debt. The national debt is $30 trillion. And our GDP is $22 trillion. In 2000, our national debt was $5 trillion, okay? And our GDP was $10 trillion. So from 2000 to 2021, our GDP grew by 4x and our national debt grew by 6x. And we have entered the danger zone. Now, what is the danger zone? If you know the economic history of Japan, Japan's GDP is four to five trillion. It's been pretty stagnant. It's been there for many, many years, but their national debt is 12 trillion. So we're entering, and I feel that we're gonna get all the way there. And what do I mean by that? I feel that we're gonna to get to the point where our national debt's gonna be 40, 45 trillion dollars. That's the direction that we're heading in. Because if you look at the trending, uh, you look at what, you know, it's every year. The GDP, that going up is cool. That's actually good. But the national debt has been skyrocketing in between, and since 2019, we've added almost seven trillion dollars worth of national debt in two years. That is highly alarming because what I feel is going to happen is the national debt is going to keep growing. I feel we're going to get to about 45, 50 trillion. And at that point, they're going to try to slow it down. But one of the things that I see is the growth of entitlement programs. Um, they're talking about another STEMI check. And I'm like, where, where's that coming from? The printing presses. It's printing presses. They're just going to create the money out of thin air. And we're on a very, very dangerous trajectory because if you look at the trends and if you look at what's happening, we're only $15 trillion away from being where Japan is. And we literally added $6 trillion, $7 trillion in two years. What I feel is we're going to have a recession and GDP is going to go down and national debt is going to skyrocket. We may add $2 trillion a year for the next. We had $2 trillion, $2 trillion to the national debt over the next seven years. We're there. We're there. And I don't see any sign of it easing up. I don't see any sign of any fiscal responsibility. I see us just heading over the fiscal cliff. And what happened to Japan is going to happen to the United States of America. The largest economy. And what I feel is when this happens, China is going to take over. China, China's GDP was 13 trillion. So they're not that far behind us when you look at what China's capable of doing. And this is where we are, and we're going to see economic stagnation because now I know I'm just sitting here talking and you're like, well, what's the problem with the national debt? It's not like this is ever going to be paid off, which is true. I don't think it's ever going to be paid off. However, when you have national debt that exceeds, that is double your GDP, your GDP is like 22 trillion, your national debt is 45 trillion. This limits what the Fed can do tremendously. It takes a lot of tools out of their toolbox. So I'm looking at this and I'm looking at this and like I said, I could be wrong. 
I could be wrong. Maybe I'm reading the tea leaves wrong. But the way that we're going and what's going to really do it is I feel whether Joe Biden wins re-election or not, that we're going to see some form of universal basic income. It's coming. It's just coming. It's coming. Because if you look at the economic climate of America right now, um, I meant to post this in the community section. A cop was shot six times last night. These criminals, they're not afraid of the police. They're, 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 they're not. And what we're going to have is a dramatic uptick in, crim in crime. And crime is already exploding. And we're going to have, it's like, it's, it's already gone wild, right? And what's going to happen is, due to the social narrative of so many people who just can't make it, they just simply can't make it. Like my video talking about F the American dream. A lot of people just can't make it. A lot of people have opted out. A lot of people are downsizing. A lot of people are becoming the minimalists. A lot of people are living in vans because they can't make it. They can't make it. And I think it's going to be bad. You know, <clears throat> when this hits, Seven years, seven years from now, I'll be 62. And I feel that's when it's going to hit. And then that's when we're going to see the stagflation. This is when we're going to see limited economic growth. This is when we're going to see the darkest economic period in America ever. We might even see another depression. And if you know your history, the Great Depression lasted 10 years because. Um, it's just going to be bad. And this, this is why I just see universal basic income in the next five years. Because there are so many people who are struggling. And this pandemic, it has opened many people's eyes to, honestly, how pathetic their lives were pre-pandemic. You know, they were going to work, they were doing some stuff. And during the pandemic, a lot of couples got closer because they actually had the time to spend with each other and enjoy each other's company and their, their love bond actually deepened because they had time. And this is this is the big thing that so many people are um, contemplating right now. Time and money. And if they can have time, screw the money. This is where people are. They're like, screw the money. I want the time. I want the time to be with my family. I want the time to be with my friends. And especially for parents of little children. Time from one to five years goes so quick. It's just boom. You know, one minute you put them in the bed and they stay where you put them. Then, bam, seven years later, they're asking you for a grilled cheese sandwich in the middle of the night. So, these are things that are people are reflecting upon. And it's just, I just see it. I just see universal basic income in the next five years, regardless if Biden wins re-election or not. I just see it. It's, it's just... Because it's going to, you know, the January 6th riots last year where they stormed the Capitol. I feel that will be nothing compared to what will come if a form of universal basic income isn't instituted to help these people out. That will look like a joke. That will look like a, a camping party. You, The people... Because one of the things you got to realize is there's many, many different voices. There are, you know, there are, like, honestly, there are YouTube channels that get more views than cable channels. That is the world we live in. And these people have a lot of reach. They have a lot of power. They have a lot of influence. And some of these people are talking about the country. They're talking about prepping. And it's going to be bad. It's going to be really, really bad if you're an average person. Because the average person is going to just get ran over by this. So I'm predicting that our national debt will be twice our GDP. Unless something miraculous happens, and it could. It could. But about seven years, we're going to be there. And then we're going to be replaced as the world's economic power by China. That sounds crazy to say out loud, 
But if China can keep its issues in check, because here's the thing, we're not the only one that have problems. China has a lot of internal problems. China has issues because they're influencers. If you're an influencer in China and you get a lot of influence, you, get, you grow a, a, a large audience, and you say something reckless, you might just disappear in China. That's a big problem in China where there, there are stars and stuff. They say something in public. Next thing you know, they're gone. No one's seen them in two or three years. They just, the, the, the government goes up and says, hey, come here. Come here. You've been a bad boy. Come here. You know where you're going. So China has a lot of internal issues. And if they can manage these issues, they will exceed us. But if they don't, we will remain the world's economic power with a gross national debt that is twice our GDP. But China will be still probably still be second, still be second, because uh, it used to be the United States and Japan. Japan was the second leading economy in the world for many, many, many years. Then they got replaced by China. And then after Japan is Germany. And then I think it's Great Britain. Then I think it's Italy. So what we're going to see during this weird period, and this is what's funny. On the national level, we're going to have this ridiculous amount of debt. And we're going to have people who are going to start creating trillion dollar fortunes. We're going to probably have our first trillionaire in the next 20 years. There will be the trillionaire class, there will be the billionaire class, there will be the millionaire class. This is going to happen. It's going to happen. And it's probably someone that already has a, they're probably already a billionaire. They're already a billionaire, and um, they're going to become a trillionaire. And we're going to have a really wacky, wacky world. We're going to have, like, remember Mad Max and that uh, movie Ethereum? I forget the name of it. It's like Matt Damon's in it, and the all the poor people live on Earth, and the rich people live in a, a satellite. <clears throat> um, I don't know if we're going to have a satellite. That's why I kind of think it's going to be more like Mad Max. Uh, everyone will be on Earth, but everyone's not going to have the same life. Everyone's not going to have the same access. I feel, because here's the thing. Here in Atlanta, all of the cities with money are pulling away from the lesser than parts of the county. You know, it's like Sandy Springs about 20 years ago succeeded from Fulton County. And Buckhead, and at some point, Buckhead's going to succeed from City of Atlanta. And Buckhead's going to get its own police force, its own firefighting force. Because they got the money. They ain't a problem. They already got the money. And they're going to have, and it's going to be a tale of two different cities. You're going to have like South Fulton police. They're going to be struggling. They're going to be understaffed. Then you're going to have the Buckhead police. They're going to have the latest and greatest, the best police cars the best pay, the best pensions. It's just going to be very, very, very interesting dichotomies of social. And what I see, because you know, I talked about this with the Lynette Atkins and the Timothy Wards and Sheeta on the Loose and the Upgrade. A lot of people are like, I'm out. They're going to tap out. They're tired of fighting. They're tired. And during this great transitional period, and it's going to be a very big transitional period, you're going to have what I would call the ultra wealthy. They're not just rich. They're rich. I'm talking these, you know, you're going to like the super wealthy already have their own armies, and that's just going to trickle down because the super wealthy are going to become the ultra wealthy. And you know it's just going to trickle up because if you look at the income classes, the top, the upper income class used to be like four percent. It has literally doubled some, double plus. It's like nine percent now. So it grew really, really quickly because of technology and access and education. But 
we're 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 walking on a very very dangerous path because once we get to the point where our national debt is twice our GDP and once again if my analysis is on point if I'm correct and we have a recession in 2023 then we have a collapse here's here's what I think is gonna happen we're gonna have a recession in 2023 it's gonna be prolonged and then we're gonna have an economic collapse and then the government is gonna start printing up money like it's crack and what we're gonna have is like the national debt grew by seven trillion dollars in two years it's gonna do that in one year and that's when it's gonna really really start cooking once once that happens and I'll report on it once the national debt goes up six seven trillion in one year it's on it's on and popping because here's the thing people go to Congress and they make these decisions what is the average age of a typical Congress person they're old the vast majority of them are old so they give us they don't give a damn it's like hey we do what we need to do we kick the can down the road we ain't gonna be here so we got people who will be making decisions that are gonna have long-term we got temporary people making long-term decisions and um, you know, I, I sit down and I, I think, all right, seven years in the future, am I going to want to live in America? Because um, this happened here. I was going to do a whole video about this. This happened last night here. I was in my office working, and then I heard screaming, and then I heard boom, boom, boom. And I was like, so I left my office, went to my front door, opened up the door, and my neighbors were fighting. They were literally duking it up, two females. And my neighbor down the hallway, he got in there, he literally pulled them apart because they were trying to kill each other. And they went on and they had this extended fight for a long time. And what it was, because it was a younger black woman and an older black woman. And I saw the older black woman and she had like a normal job. And I was like, how does she live here? That was the first, the first time I saw her in a little uniform. I was like, how does she live here? And apparently the younger girl, which I have no clue to what she does, has been paying all the bills. So it's somewhat of a hobosexual situation. And the way they were fighting. I mean, had hair, I, like, dude just had to get hair, like, oh, hey, hey, stop it, stop, 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 stop. And I'm just sitting there looking at this, and I'm like, what the hell? So, I don't know if I'm going to want to live in America seven years from now. I don't know. Because... That type of fuckery is right next door to me. Nothing like that ever happened in Sandy Springs. But going forward, it will be happening in Sandy Springs. Because crime is going to be everywhere. Dysfunction is going to be everywhere. And I'm sitting here. Do I want to live in America in seven years from now? Or maybe I want to live in the Bahamas. I mean, that's a very, because I'm, I'm pondering that. I'm pondering that because I got a 10-year plan. And I'm like, do I want to live here? Because America is going to become a very dangerous place. Very dangerous. Like, um, I was having a conversation with someone, and she was talking about, you don't know what it's like to be a woman. I said, you know I carry a gun every day. I don't know what you're talking about. I carry a gun every day because I'm scared and I'm a man. I don't know what you're talking about. She's like, you carry a gun? I said, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm packing every day. I'm packing every day. And what I feel is depending upon, because here, here's the thing. To, I, I just 
kind of it's it's kind of wild, but I see walled cities because that's the only way you're going to keep the riffraff out. As long as they have easy access, the riffraff will flow to the wealthy areas because that's where the money will be. They will flow just like I'm like. That last night blew my mind. Blew my mind. This, I, I have not seen adults fight. Ever. I have never seen that in my life. Ever. And they were going and screaming for about two hours. And I think it was a, somewhat of a lesbian relationship because... That was just too much heat for them just to, you know, know each other. That was just too much heat. It was too intense. This was some deep down to the bone emotional stuff that came up to the, and it all came up at once and it just boiled over. And that is going to be replicated across the United States of America. People are going to start exploding. People are going to people. I feel that people are like, ticking time bombs. They're just and it's just gonna take that one event, it's gonna take that one moment for them to explode. Like what happened the other night. Because um until that happened, I was thinking about staying here. I don't know now. I really don't know. I gotta think about that. I gotta think about it because um my time here is going pretty quick. October, November, December, January, February. So I got to really, really think about my next move. Because there's certain things I love, but there's things I cannot ignore. It's like some of these chicks I was dating. When I saw red flags, I was like, that is a red flag. And it's waving furiously in the wind. Pay attention. So I got to pay attention to that because um, I'm going to talk to my neighbor down the hall because apparently he, he knows them. And I was like, what was, what, what was that? What was that? And um, we'll see if something else like that happens. Because uh, also, this is fun fact. When I moved in, I met a lot of my neighbors. And one of my neighbors, and we'll just call her G. I was out in the hallway and I saw her and she had some moving guys with her. And they were moving some stuff and I thought that was odd. And then, you know, we started talking and she said, can I tell you something? And I was like, sure, what's on your mind? Unburden yourself, my child. And then she tells me her husband is gay. And I'm like, that's heavy. That's really heavy. And she pulls out her phone and she shows me all of this evidence that she's collected that her husband had been fucking other men. And her husband, she had a video of him in their bedroom performing for Grindr. Performing like these cam shows. It was just very, very disturbing. And she was like, well, the movers are here because I can't stay. I just can't stay. And I was just like blown away by that. Because, you know, we used to talk on the regular. And um, I'm just sitting here because between the car rental business, moving here, I've been exposed to a lot in the last 10 months. I've been exposed to a lot because in many regards, I was, um, I was sheltered. I was very, very sheltered. I, I, I didn't understand, you know, I'm a grown man, I run business and stuff, but I was sheltered and I lived in a bubble. And I've come out that bubble. I want 
want to go back in the bubble. I don't like it out here. I want to go back in the bubble. Because I'm just sitting there like, the things I've experienced, um, I think I'll tell y'all the truth. We folk. The chick who is going to be homeless, we used to date. And as I got to know her, she makes very bad financial decisions consistently. And this is why I just shook my head and listened. And I did not offer, I did not put on my cape and become Captain Sabaho. I let her, ha I let what happened to her happen to her. And I feel that it was a good experience because I am seeing up close and personal the pain that the global reset is causing. Now she reset herself because she quit her job when she didn't have to. And she was just talking about all these things that she couldn't do. And she had one year, one year of freedom. And now she's in economic hell. And um, it, 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 it's, it, you know, it, it, it's crazy because the sex was amazing because she's a freak. She's a super freak. And I'm just like, I'm coming to an epiphany here for me that I'm going to have to find, well, I think I already found a stable, well-adjusted person. And I'm going to have to teach her how to be a freak because the already, you know, box, you know, just poor freak out the box. They're already, they're already freaky. There's so many issues. There's so many issues because one of the things is I have no Captain Save a Whole chromosomes. I have none. I'm like, that's a terrible. Your life is falling down. That's terrible. I will because once again, when someone is drowning, you got to be careful because they teach you this. Because when someone is drowning, they can pull you under. They can pull you under. And I'm just sitting there like, and then uh, she found some YouTube stuff and she got mad. Because, you know, we only saw each other like once a week, once every other week. And she got mad because I was fucking other chicks. I assume that she knew because you know we didn't have a deep down you're my girl we didn't have that kind of conversation and then she got pissed and then she accused me of some stuff that I didn't do and I ended up having to block her because one of the things that I'm not going to do no one is moving up in here unless she is my fiance I've asked this woman to marry me and she's just moving in because it's just more convenient. Other than that, I am not living with a chick. I'm just not doing it. And what I have seen is because these chicks are in so much danger and trouble that that's what it's going to take to save them. And I'm like, you ain't, you're not moving in with me. That ain't happening. It ain't happening. And then when I moved here and I started meeting all of these women who were well put together and had their stuff together, I was like, that's more my speed. That's more my speed. Because I would say between the car rental business and a few dating experiences, because like I had no clue that this chick's finances were as bad as they were. I had none. I saw her, you know, she, you know, she looked put together. You know. I had no clue. And her financial life is a dumpster fire. It's just a dumpster fire. And I have the good sense to leave that stuff alone. And I'm telling you, like I've seen a lot of you gentlemen posting, you know, posting that all of a sudden a lot of your old exes are reaching out or they ain't nothing compared to what's to come. You might start hearing from girlfriends in high school because this global reset 
this pandemic is hitting women really, really hard. Really, you wanna know why it's hitting women? Because women go to college and get fluff degrees and they don't get substantial degrees. They don't go to engineering school. Some women do. Uh, the chick who lives next door, she's an engineer. That's why she can live next door because she has a very, like I, I ran into her the other day and uh, we're supposed to go hang out and she's working on this billion dollar project. Uh, the women who make the decision to go to engineering school, computer science school, uh, medical school, get a law degree, these chicks are, will be fine. But if you go to school and get a degree in journalism and end up working in the bar, you're not going to be fine. You're not going to be fine. And gentlemen, keep your head on the swivel because they will be coming for you. Hobo nation, hobo sexual nation is a real thing. That's what I saw because that that's hobo. Next door is hobo sexual nation because they were fighting because the older one couldn't get into the apartment, which tells me she doesn't have a key. And she doesn't have a key fob. You can't get into the apartment, which tells me she is not on the lease. Because if she was on the lease, she would have a key. She would have a key fob. So essentially what she does, we have a doorman here, is she has to go to the doorman and then the other one has to let her up and then open up the door for her. The more I think about that, I think the younger one was doing that as a control mechanism because, you know, um, you can give someone a key and whether you're here or not, you can have the doorman let them up and they can get into the apartment. So. There, there's more to that. There's more to that. But, man, what is coming to be? What is happening? As I look at, at how this country has changed, you know, uh, like some people left some comments. Like, you can walk down the street, you won't find no money because people are not using cash like they used to. I just look at all of the changes. And I can say this, 10 years from now, I may not be living in America. I may not be living in America. You know, we're going to have to go year by year and look at the temperature. But I might be in a country that will be safer. Because America is going to get, like I said, it's going to get real dangerous here. Real dangerous. You could become a statistic just going to your car. That's how dangerous it's going to get in America because when you look at the lower social economic strata, they're going to go deeper. They're going to go further down. They're going to it's going to get worse. And when it gets worse, this is when people get desperate. And we're going to have lots of desperate people. Lots of desperate people. So because that situation last night was very violent. It was very, uh, it was very primal. It was very primal. And I was just sitting there like, what the, what the hell? And uh, I took a, because they were screaming and stuff, and I, I got a video of it. Well, I got, a, I got, a, I recorded the sound of them screaming, and I sent it to the girl I'm dating, and she said, well, you want to look at Because she, she knows Buckhead, and she's like, and then she told me there was a shooting at Linux. That I was like, I didn't even know. Cause I don't watch the news. And she, we, we talked for about two hours last night. It was just. So we will see. I will keep you guys updated on what's going on. But for for the next eight months, I'm here. Uh, I'm here. And after that, I don't know. I really don't know. We gotta take it day by day. Because where I used to live, nothing like that ever happened. Nothing ever happened. Nothing. Nothing. And like I said, you know, I have been pushed out of my bubble because 
I'll admit it, I'm a little obtuse. I don't know what the average person's going through because none of my friends, none of my close friends are average. I had no clue. And then until I dipped into this car rental business and I started to see, because one of the things that really got me is like with the car rental business, if they had to get an oil change and they had to pay for it, these people would pester, I mean, it's like 80 bucks. And then I had to understand that 80 bucks is nothing to me. But to these people, 80 bucks was quite significant. Quite significant. And I was just like, and I'm going to say something. This may make me sound like an elite. I don't really want to hang out with these people. If 80 bucks, 100 bucks is that significant in your life, I don't want to be your friend. I don't even want to know you. I only want to be around you because me, like today, I bought, I ordered $400 worth of liquor on Instacart and uh, it generated a pretty generous tip because that was the fastest that I had ever had Instacart picked up and delivered. And I ordered a bunch of tequila and stuff because you know, the, uh, the liquor is for guests. I'm not that big of a drinker, but whenever someone comes over here and they want to kick back and get a few sips, there it is. And I just did that without even thinking. So if $80 or $100 is super, super important to you, I don't want to be your friend. I don't even want to know you. I don't even want to be around you. I don't even want to be around you because me just talking about stuff that I do would come off to me was bragging. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt, don't want to go back to that resort. Don't want to go back. And I'm seeing, and once again, this is now. This is in 2022. Three years from now, it's going to be worse. And like I said, I'm packing every day. I'm going to tell y'all a story. And this was, I had left my gun at home. And I was on the south side of town. I don't know what I was over there for. And then I had to get gas. So I'm getting gas and I was driving the red Porsche. And you know, the Porsche draws a lot of attention, a lot of pension. So I'm used to people like, hey, nice car, what year is it? I'm used to those conversations, they happen all the time. And I was having those conversations, I was telling them, and then I saw four dudes who were by the store who started coming my way. I mean, straight, you know, you could tell when you see people coming your way like a beeline because they were walking, they were coming my way. And I'm almost full, not quite full because I always fill up. And they get over there and they were like, my man, what do you do for a living? And I said, I own a few businesses. And then they asked this question that I've never been asked before. Do you employ black folks? And I said, I employ the best people I can. And it's like, let me ask you again. Do you employ black people? And then they started to go on. It's like, over here, we got black people who are suffering, who are scratching for food. And here you are in, like, you know, if, I'm, if you don't mind me asking, how much this costs? It's like 120000 And he said, your car payment must be stupid. I said, I don't have any car payments. He said, what do you mean you don't have no car payments? I said, I paid cash. And the way his eyes flickered and the way they looked at each other, they was like, you pay cash for a car? You must be rich. You must be one of those people keeping the poor people down so you could get richer. And the hair... The way we were acting, the hair on the back of my neck just stood up. And at this point, my car was full. I put the pump in there, and I got back in my car, turned it on, and I backed out, and I took off. That happened because of that car. That car 
brought that into my life. And I'm like, I am never going back over there. Because, I mean, what was happening was the temperature was getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And they were getting angry and belligerent. And I was just pumping gas. I was just pumping gas. And this happened the other day. Once again, I don't want to go back in my bubble. I don't want to be exposed to these people. But, you know, like I said, it's good for me because it's forcing me to resolve and conflict some of my opinions. And I'm like, ah. Oh, hmm. It is, um, I just don't see good times ahead for the average person. I just don't. Hopefully I am wrong. Hopefully I am wrong, but we will see what unemployment does this month. If unemployment ticks up and it ticks up in March, that's what's called a trend. There's 90 days of unemployment tricking up. And then we go into the summer and the summer automatically slows down and unemployment keeps tricking up. If unemployment keeps tricking up every month this year, that is a sure sign that we'll be in a recession in 2023. And with the political body that we have, the national deficit could explode. It can literally explode. So that's all I got for you guys. The training is going to begin in March because I, I, like I was going to do it right after Super Bowl Sunday, but I haven't really, I haven't sat down and thought about it the way that I want to think about it because I want to give you guys something good. I don't just want to push something out. So I'm going to think about it because I, I, I've been thinking about it, but I haven't got to the point where I've actually opened because it's going to be a new website. It's going to be founders. It's going to have gear. It's going to be really, really lit. But give me a little time and we'll launch this the 1st of March. That's when we'll launch this. And I'll let you guys know. All right. That's all I got for you guys. I'll talk to you in the next one.